Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Barb. I'm Dr. Barb Lenahan. Let's make sure that's right side up this time. And I'm here to answer your questions about all things animals. Today's topic, it's raining cats and dogs. Hit it, Kula! question today comes to us from Bailey in California. Hey Dr. Burr, do our cats scared of cucumbers? Awesome question Bailey and this is actually a bit of a hot topic for debate on the internet. You may have seen videos where people will put a cucumber behind their cat and then when their cat turns around it is spooked and either jumps in the air or runs away. So some people think that the cats are startled because the cucumber actually resembles a snake. And cats are innately afraid of snakes, meaning they're born knowing that it's something they should stay away from. While other people think that the cat would react that way to any object that they hadn't seen before that was placed behind them and they didn't know it was behind them. Cats are generally afraid of objects that sneak up behind them, whether that's a cucumber, an apple, a phone, or even a person or another animal. So the jury's a little bit split on that one, whether it's really because it resembles a snake or because it's just something that was there that wasn't there before and it snuck up behind them. But either way, please don't spook your cats at home to try and figure this out. Thanks for that awesome question, Bailey. Our next question comes to us from Gabrielle in Rhode Island. Hi, Dr. Barb. I have a question for you. Why do dogs get sick when they eat grapes? That is an excellent question, Gab. It was actually discovered fairly recently that grapes and raisins are toxic to dogs and cats. When they eat them, it causes damage to their kidneys, which can actually be deadly. So for years, veterinarians and scientists have tried to figure out why it is that humans can eat grapes and raisins, but when dogs or cats do, it can be deadly. And over the years, there have been several different theories about which compounds in grapes cause the issue. Some people have suggested mycotoxins, which are basically toxins that come from a fungus that can be found in grapes. Other people have suggested salicylate, which is a compound kind of like aspirin that can also be found in grapes. But just this year, veterinarians published a new paper suggesting that another compound called tartaric acid is actually the culprit. And of course, more work is being done to investigate this theory and see if that's truly the case. Either way, Grapes or raisins, even just a couple, can be deadly to dogs and cats. So please be sure to never feed them to your pets as treats and to keep them far out of reach. If there's a little whoopsie and your dog or cat does eat some grapes, it is best to bring them to your veterinarian immediately. Thanks for that great question, Gab. I'm sure a lot of you at home already know this, but there are some other things that humans can eat at home that are toxic to dogs too. Things like onions, garlic, avocados, and an artificial sweetener called xylitol. And speaking of things that dogs should not eat, Gab has another question for us. Go ahead, Gab. How much chocolate does it take for a dog to get sick? Another excellent question, Gab. Chocolate is toxic to dogs because it contains a chemical called theobromine in addition to caffeine. And dogs cannot metabolize or break down this chemical like humans can. The more bitter a chocolate is, the more it contains of this toxic chemical. So it varies in the amount of chocolate that it takes to make a dog sick. For instance, if a large dog like a golden retriever were to eat one milk chocolate Hershey Kiss 
or a couple of milk chocolate M&Ms, they would likely be okay. But if that same dog were to have a large bar of baking chocolate or dark chocolate, that could make them sick and potentially be deadly. So it's best to keep all chocolate away from dogs, whether it's milk or dark chocolate. But the darker the chocolate, the worse it is for them. And of course, the more they eat, the more toxic it could be to them. Just like with the grapes and raisins, if your dog does accidentally get into some chocolate, it's best to bring them to your veterinarian right away. Fun fact, when I was little, my dog, who was a basset hound, ate my entire Easter basket full of milk chocolate. Happy to say she was okay with a little recuperation. <laughs> well, on to our next question, which comes to us from Wade in California. Hi, Dr. Barb. Why do cats like to climb trees? That's a wonderful question, Wade. Cats are very good climbers due to their extendable claws and strong rear legs to help them scurry up trees. Cats are hunters, but also they can be hunted by other larger animals like dogs or bully cats in the neighborhood, coyotes, that sort of thing. So sometimes they like to scurry up trees so that they're off the ground and they feel more safe and secure. And also a lot of cats do like to hunt smaller animals like lizards, mice, and birds. So perching up high in a tree lets them look out over everything and see if there's anything either chasing them or that they want to chase. Sometimes cats are better at getting up trees than they are getting down. <coughs> Thanks for the excellent question. Our next question comes to us from Niall in New Hampshire. Sorry, is there any kind of dog that can dance? Your pup sure does have some great moves. And I know two pups of my own who love to dance. So dogs can be trained to dance like this famous salsa dancing dog you may have seen on the internet. But scientists have shown that the only animals that can truly dance, meaning they'll move to the beat of the music without being trained, are elephants and some birds. How cool is that? You want to see some moves with Coco and Kula? To end things off, let's go. another episode of Ask Dr. Barb. Thanks to all of today's participants for their doggone perfect questions. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell to be notified when new videos drop every week. In the meantime, please keep up your enthusiasm and love of animals and of course, be a good steward of the ocean and planet every single day. If you have questions that you want me to answer, please email them in to the email address in my about section and I'll be sure to answer them for you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye from Kula.